Okay, so today, this is our 6.2 lesson on point-slope form. We're still going to be talking about linear equations. Um, we've talked about two different ways to write those so far. We've got um, y equals mx plus b. Remember, that was from yesterday, so m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. And then we also have standard form. And standard form, uh, remember, that was before break, is ax plus by equals c. Um, and point-slope form is still going to be linear, so we're not going to have any exponents or anything else, but it is going to tell us a point on the line and the slope. So you may want to, well, let's talk about the form and then we can take a note. So the point-slope form itself looks like this. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I'm actually going to do um, add one more thing to this to help it make some sense to you. So first I want you to add some parentheses on this side. Notice now that your x and y are in parentheses. Um, m, just like it before, m stands for slope. This y1 and x1 are a point. So x1 comma y1 is a point um, on our line. And the, the thing that I really want you to notice, because this is negative, because these are both minus signs, they're going to be opposite. Something that you may want to take a note of, and hear me when I say this, it's important to know, when we see things in parentheses in an equation, it generally means that it's we want to think opposite. So I'm going to make one little note. When we see parentheses, we're going to think opposite. And you'll see what I mean when we go through... Um, an example. So what this format looks like, uh, down here we've got an example, example three. It says the slope is six and the line is one half and they want us to write an equation. So if we write an equation of that using above, I'm going to go ahead and just get it set up. Um, I know it's going to be y minus something, x minus something, and a number. Pay attention, I'm filling numbers into these three spots. M is my slope, so if you look back at the top, M is my slope. So in this first spot, I'm going to put the slope as 6. And then remember, inside parentheses is I want you to think opposite. So here, X is 1 and Y is 2. So in my Y parentheses, I'm going to think opposite of that, and instead of it being a positive 2, I'm going to write minus 2. Same for the X, because X is positive 1, I'm going to write minus 1. So your final equation there, I'm just rewriting this so that you can see it all in one color, is y minus 2 equals 6 parentheses x minus 1. All right, if we do one more of those, I'm going to do this one a little bit more quickly. Ooh, all right, so the first parenthesis is y, and I want to think opposite because it's inside parentheses, so this is going to be y minus 1. My slope, m, is 1 third. And then in this other parentheses is x, and I want to think opposite again. So since the x is negative 3, I'm going to write x plus 3. Rewatch that slide if you need to. All right, now we're going to go a little out of order. We're going to do example 3 next. Um, what you should notice here is they've given us two points, but they still want us to use point-slope form. So just like we did yesterday, we need to first find the slope. So remember my slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Take a second and pause, and I want you to work that out. And you should get negative 3 over 1, or that's just the same thing as negative 3. You're probably going to want to write it as a fraction, though, instead of simplifying it to a whole number. And now, because they give us two points, we just get to choose which point. So between these, um, you just need to choose a point. And I'm, it makes literally no difference. I'm just going to pick the first one just for the sake of picking the first one. So remember, y, think opposite. So it's going to be y minus 4. I just found my slope, that's going to be negative 3 over 1, and then x, I want to think opposite, x minus 2. This is me using the first point. If you had chosen the second point, it would, you may not believe me, but it would give you the exact same equation, um, even though it's going to look different. So this is what I'm writing in green here is what the equation would have looked like if you had picked the second point. Both would have been correct. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to circle this as my final answer. That's exactly what we did on the first page. All right, 
pause. I want you to try to work out nine on your own and let's see if we get the same answer. All right, so when I worked out the slope, I got zero. Remember, if zero's on the top, that equals zero. You could use your calculator to figure that out. Um, and then I just used opposites to fill in my two parentheses. The one thing that I want you to notice though, parentheses, now we haven't worked this out, but parentheses mean multiplication. So if you multiply, just I just want you to kind of make a note to yourself that this whole left side is, or I'm sorry, right side is going to equal zero in the end. So the right side is going to equal zero. So really my equation, even simpler, could look like this. Y minus one equals zero. There's nothing on that other side. My guess, though, is that you're probably going to want to keep it like this. I'm just telling you that for kind of future reference. All right, so now we're on to word problems. And I know some of you see word problems and you just want to cry and hate me. <laughs> um, they're not really that bad. And in fact, these actually give us some hints. So if I read just at the very end, it says use a linear equation in point slope form. That means somewhere in this information they've given me a point and a slope. So the things that you might see when you read this problem, Daisy purchased a gym membership. She pays a sign-up fee um, and a monthly fee of $11. So if it were me taking notes, I would maybe make that a bullet point. That way you don't have to copy the whole problem. And then if we keep reading, it says after four months, she has a total of $59. So let's make that a bullet point also. All right, so now you should see, it, it's probably even easier to see when we write it like this, maybe which one is the point and which one is the slope. Um, if you aren't sure though, there's a few hints. This number 11 is by itself. Well, I can't really write an ordered pair for something by itself, which gives me a hint that maybe this is the slope. And the other thing that tells me is this is monthly, like it's happening every single month or each month. That's usually a keyword for you all. So there is my slope 11, which means this bottom part is somehow going to be my point. And if you read, that says four months is $59. So there's my point. So now I'm just writing my equation. I'm going to use opposites. Y minus 59 equals the slope. And then use opposites again. X minus 4. Done. All right, on this page, we're only going to do question 10, and it does involve this graph to the right. So what I want you to do is pause and take a second just to read the problem. And the big thing that I hope that you noted um, is that they want me to use an equation. So to be able to use an equation, the first thing I have to do is to write an equation. So we've got to do that part first, which is what we've been doing this whole time. And so if I'm going to write the equation, that is going to come from my graph. So they've given me these two points. If you need to pause and go back to a previous slide to remember how to do that, do so, but you should be able to write that now. Okay, so notice the first thing that I did was I used my two points and my slope formula to find the slope. And then I picked this um, point with the smaller values just to make my equation a little bit easier to work with because I don't want to have to multiply 18 or 49 or anything. I want to use smaller numbers. So here's the equation that I've got to work with right now. So the second thing they want me to do is to use my equation. And they want me to use my equation to figure out... Um, how much they would pay for 22 gallons of gas. So what we have to think about, 22 gallons, if you look at our graph, gallons is an x value. So this is my x value. They want me to figure out how much is what it costs, so they're wanting me to find for y. So what I need to do is use this x value and plug in. And I'm going to plug in to the x portion of my equation. So now my equation is going to read... Um, y minus 10 equals 3 times, and instead of x, I'm going to put 22 minus 5. Now this is something that we can work out. Okay, so now all we have to do is work this out. And just remember, order of operations, the first thing I'm going to need to do is simplify the parentheses. That's going to give me 3 times 17 on this side. Y minus 10 is going to stay the same. 3 times 17 is 51. You could use a calculator if you needed to for that. 
y minus 10 is still the same. And I want y by itself. So to undo this subtraction, I'm going to add 10, which means y is going to equal 61. And if I think back to my problem, they were asking me to find the amount a member would pay. So this means, uh, and we always want to write a sentence, a member will pay $61 for 22 gallons of gas. All right. Okay, so we're actually not going to answer all of these questions today. The big two that I want you to, or the two things I want you to be able to do are tell me the difference between slope intercept form and point slope form. That's what you should be able to do when you come into class tomorrow.